Prince Caspian is largely a story of people living in hiding. So today I'm going to attempt making my own sort of hideaway within my house. There we go, there is our uh, little hideaway. Do you want to come into the burrow? Come on. <laughs> There's the bulgy bear. Conveniently, I've got lots of books in here to read. Oh. Here, you could sit on the shelf here, in front of the McDonald books. <laughs> right next to the Tolkien. All right. Ooh, the old Narnians in hiding. You can search through all the nooks and wild places of the land to see if any fawns or talking beasts or dwarves are perhaps still alive and hiding. Do you think there are any? asked Caspian eagerly. I don't know. I don't know, said the doctor with a deep sigh. Sometimes I'm afraid there can't be. I've been looking for traces of them all my life. Sometimes I have thought I heard a dwarf drum in the mountains. Sometimes at night in the woods, I thought I caught a glimpse of fawns and satyrs dancing a long way off. But when I came to the place, there was never anything there. Mm. <laughs> Here's the bear's burrow. There was a great deal more talk. But it all ended with the agreement that Caspian should stay, and even the promise that, as soon as he was able to go out, he should be taken to see what Trumpkin called the Others. For apparently in these wild parts, all sorts of creatures from the old days of Narnia still lived on in hiding. You can make your hideout quite comfortable, with cushions and pillows, everything you need to stow away for the long winter. I myself have got Honey nuts from Patter Twig and the Bulgy Bear. Um, apples from the Orchard at Care Paravel. And grapes from Silenus. Yeah, so you can make, you could try this at home. Probably in one fashion or another. There'll always be different kinds of tools on hand. There's so many different um, options or different ways that you could build a fortress or a burrow or a hiding place. I would love to see what you come up with. <sighs> Well, wow.